Hello everyone, this is Tay Kwan from Keene, New Hampshire, and this is your RIPE Global Implantology Case Review. I would like to share this case, Noah, uh, who, happened to came, who happened to come to my office a few days ago, and we already placed the implant on maxillary left central incisor area. And this is how we present it. An implant is almost ready to be restored. And when you look at his case, he already had an implant on the contralateral um, side. And you can clearly see that there is a free gingival graft that was augmented. The reason for that was that when this implant was done 10 years ago, um, over time, he actually developed gingival recession, which caused showing off the metal abutment. And this happens a lot when the soft tissue that is surrounding the implant and also the bone is extremely thin. And when that happens and you have a metal exposure, the only way that you can predictably treat this is using free gingival graft that goes on the top of the existing mucosa. When you do that, although it worked really nicely in his case where the metal exposure was completely closed, Aesthetically, you can see this is not the best scenario because you can almost see, I call it a tire patch of the gingiva around this implant. So when you are restoring the implant on the other side now, which is the maxillary right left central incisor, can you do it a little bit differently to thicken the soft tissue so that we can prevent recession, but also we can avoid doing this unesthetic free gingival graft later um, later in his life. And this is when the minimally invasive connective tissue graft technique come into play. And I'll show you how to do that. First, I remove the healing abutment. And you can see the emergence of the soft tissue. And once I do this, I use what we call an orban knife, uh, which is a sharp instrument, uh, but it's not as sharp as 15 or other blades, and I go in and create this pocket of the gum within the emergence. And after that, I harvest connective tissue graft from the palate, and to this pocket that I just created, I can insert this graft like so. And once the graft is inserted into this buccal emergence pocket, how do I finish this? You don't need any stitches. All you need is just putting a healing abutment back and you have a completely sealed surgical site. And look at the post-operative, immediate post-operative emergence. You can see the buccal area now is more convex as opposed to concave. And because the tissue actually went inside layer, aesthetically it's not gonna be as non-aesthetic as the free gingival graft which was on the other side. And this is how he finished or how he left my office. You can clearly see there's almost bulging of the buccal tissue. But aesthetically, it looks totally acceptable because there is no graft showing on the outer layer. And this is how it looked on the donor site where I made an incision on the palate and then went, went to uh, the inside layer of the palatal epithelium and then took the connective tissue graft. So this is a short case that I wanted to share with you, and this is extremely important again, because the, the thicker soft tissue means more blood supply for the underlying buccal bone, which is normally thin around the implant in the aesthetic zone anatomically. So by giving this extra thickness, we can prevent the resorption of the bone which can prevent the resorption or recession of the gingiva that is surrounding the implant. If you want to learn this technique a little bit more in detail uh, and you want to try maybe in your cases, I strongly recommend you joining uh, RIPE Global Modern Implantology program where not only we're going to teach you how to do the implant, but how to build soft and hard tissue which is the indispensable components to, to achieve successful um, outcome of implant therapy. Thank you very much, and I'll see you for your next case review.